Tomorrow's the big day. You know what it is. Come on. It's Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. And I still have to run out and do something, a card, something for Amy. Well, yeah, Valentine's Day. We we in our family, you know, my husband and I, we don't really celebrate too, too much. There, But there might be a card or I might make a special meal or something like that. Yeah. Um, Expect the jewelry. Well, jewelry. Do you yeah. know something I don't? Whoa. I'm super interested. Oh, sorry, now. Joey. I didn't mean to do that to you, buddy. <laughs> you just set him up hard. <laughs> I'm behind a guy in CVS the other day, Saturday, I guess, and he has this bewildered look on his face, like, "What am I gonna do?" And he he got uh, a stuffed animal, candy, flowers that I didn't know they sold at CVS. Like he had a hundred and something dollars. Hey, listen. That place has got me out a lot of Valentine's days. Well, yeah. You know, it saved me a lot, especially the box of chocolates. I'll get it. Yes. I'll scratch my belly when I come in. Here you go. Happy Valentine's Day. Please don't do <laughs> And the shirt that comes out. Pop it. <laughs> Pop it. The hairy belly. <laughs> hey there, sweetheart. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, my goodness. You hear it fall. But listen, you do something that I think is amazing, and I was reading it, is actually worth more than that box candy. When you walk in. What? You unload the dishwasher every morning. That's the first thing I do when I wake up. Well, I I wake up, and then I go downstairs, and then I take care of the dishwasher. I love that. I will say my husband takes the dogs out and gets them completely ready um, because I'm already gone, and so he does that every single day. I don't do that for Amy. I do that for me. You do that? It helps wake me up. You You do that for Amy. No. Hey, listen, if I miss a day... It's a chore now. I started doing it two years ago. Yeah. And I'm like, I need I need to wake up. So I put away the dishes. It helps wake me up. But at first, wasn't she like, oh, he unloaded the dishes? She dish said thank washer. you for a week. Yeah. And then I forgot a couple of times and, you know. Well, we'll say you can't forget anymore. No, I can't forget anymore. Yeah. But those are the things I think that say the most. My dad, before he used to, you know, go to bed at night, go around, check all the locks. And I thought that was so sweet and romantic. Checking the locks? Yeah. It's Make the, sure the boogeyman don't come in? Right. He's protecting. He, Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I love that kind of thing. Oh, huh, all right. My love language, acts of service, so absolutely. All right. What do you mm. do, Scott? I take the trash out. Oh, see? About right. every day. I do we that, have, too. We, I yeah. Love and that. I can see the sparkle in my wife's eyes. Really? When I do it. She loves wow. it. Right? When he and replaces a, the bag? Do you do that? Please tell me you replace the bag after you take it. Oh, yeah. Off. I do. Okay. Yeah. okay see? Yeah. But that's self-serving for me, too, because it has to be done a certain way. Why? I'm selfish. Why? Hey, I'm one of the most selfish people I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I put the weight of dishes for me. No, you don't. That I take out everybody. the trash for me because I want the the bag has to be in a certain way because if somebody else puts it in, it's not underneath the lip. Then the bag falls in while the garbage is in there and it's even worse of a mess. Okay, I can see where that's that that's very is a little bit for you, but she doesn't have to take out the garbage um, or, or deal with any of that mess. So I see that as romance. Well, that's my chore. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning on his radio. It's Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. He gets a flat tire. Mm-hmm. He puts the spare on. He's only 19. He knows what to do. Oh, which is so cool. Somebody <laughs> good, told this boy, right? Good for you, yeah. Delavante. Goes off to Walmart to get it fixed. And as he's walking around inside waiting for it, he saw a wallet just alone on a shopping cart. Oh, my goodness. So now he has a choice to make. Yeah. It's a very important choice. What's he going to do with that wallet? Is he going to bring it to the customer service, do the right thing, or is he going to do something else with it? Yeah, he did You know what happened? Yeah, he didn't take it to customer he service. He didn't. Mm-mm. So all of a sudden, the owner of this wallet gets a call from a friend and said, do you, do you know where your wallet is? And the friend and, 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 and this lady's going, no, I... I think I left it at Walmart. I don't know where my wallet is. It's missing. She goes, it's here. Because some kid found it at Walmart and drove it to your house. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Why? So he had sort of driven pretty much home, and then he realized or found out where he needed to go to take this wallet, and he ended up driving like 30 miles out of his way to take it back to this lady. Hey, he had a new tire. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> that was all taken care of. So he did wind up doing the right thing. He right? did do the right thing. He didn't do it the way, you know, we might normally think to do it with customer service. He just took care of it himself. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. Listen, don't knock it until you try it. Seriously, don't knock it. Because there is um, a test sandwich hmm. at Chick-fil-A. 
and it's a cauliflower sandwich. Yeah. And, and the cauliflower is replacing the chicken. It actually looks like a chicken. Yeah, they're gonna away. they're gonna put the batter on and all that stuff just like they do with the the chicken. Yeah, it's a vegan option, and it's cauliflower. I know a lot of people eat cauliflower rice. Don't knock it till I, you try it. Listen, I love cauliflower. My wife Amy makes a cauliflower pizza. The cauli the the crust is all cauliflower. Yeah. It's amazing. Is it as good as the original crust? It's good. Okay. I mean, nothing is like bread dough, but this is amazing. It's good. My wife makes it well. Who are you looking at? Ninja. What's she? Do- What's she- up, Ninja? Her what? Face. Nothing as good as the OG. I'll make gluten-free and dairy-free options for me, and make the regular for my husband. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. I really want what you've got. I, my wife does the same thing. She's she has to eat gluten-free stuff, yeah. and so she makes everybody else in the house the the real. I don't want to call it real stuff. She'll it make the, the normal stuff. recipe, and yeah, then she'll she. make her the gluten-free mm. recipe. Well, I love cauliflower. Absolutely love just raw, fresh cauliflower. So it's not that that I have the issue with. But, I mean, if you're going to Chick-fil-A, you're going there for the chicken, now, I feel like. There's only three places you can get this. Denver and Greensboro and Charleston. So okay. only three places to get the the chicken or the cauliflower sandwich. And I think it's today like it starts testing it starts today, today if yeah. I'm not mistaken. So Could you imagine since tomorrow's Valentine's Day taking your sweetheart Stop to one now. of these Chick-fil-A's mm. and getting her a wonderful cauliflower sandwich? Yeah. I mean Don't look for a second. Listen, date. Scott's all I'm in. I'm just kidding. Scott's all in. <laughs> Right. No, if I'm at Chick Fil A and I'm given the choice of chicken or cauliflower, I'm going chicken. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. So the sheriff's office in Michigan. There's Deputy Thorne, and he gets this call, and there's this guy just sitting in a car, looking pretty seedy. You know, it's just mm. like there's something going on here. You better go check it out. And so he pulls up to the car, and then there's Joe in the car, and Joe's about to hurt himself. Oh no! Nobody else, okay. but hurt himself. And so Deputy Thorne starts talking to him a little bit, and then he, and then as they're talking in the conversation, he's like, "Is there anything I can do for you?" And Joe goes, "You know, I could use a hug." And so he hugged him. It made his day. And Joe's going to be okay. Joe's finding help now. He's getting the help that he needs. Wow. But all Joe needed just to pull out of that mess that his mind was in was just somebody to hug him. Somebody, and there was Deputy Thorne to hug him. Somebody to show that they cared. Yeah. And and I think that that's it. You know, somebody that's in that place a lot of times just needs to know that they are loved. Yeah. And we need to start that, you know? I, it can be a smile. It can just be a kind word. But, man, this... You know, police officers never know from the day to day what they're going to encounter. Well, I have two in my family. Mm. My oldest and his wife are both police officers. Mm. One's a sheriff deputy, and the other's on the SWAT team, and he's got a canine. And so they see this stuff all the time. I hear some of the bad things that happen. No wonder why our police officers can sometimes get a really hard heart. Because they see the worst of humanity, Mm -hmm. where you and I get to see some of the better things of people in their side. And to have a soft heart like that, and for Deputy Thorne to go, you know what, I'm going to give you a hug. It's going to be okay. You're going to be all right. It's nice to see that there is that gentle side in the middle of all the hard stuff that they see every day. Yeah, he was able to give that man what he needed in the moment. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the Morning. His radio. It's Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. Peter had retired a few years ago, and he and his wife, they were enjoying their life. They were traveling. They were hanging out with their family more. And then, unexpectedly, his wife passed away. This happened about six years ago. They were married 72 years. For real. Wow. So he's 100. He said, you know what? I still have life to give. I still have some knowledge to pass on to drop. And so he decided to come out of retirement, and he is helping young kids learn how to read. At the age of 100. 100. Good for him. Well, he said, 
I don't walk real well anymore. And, you know, there's certain things I can't do. He said, and I quote, but I still got my marbles. <laughs> <laughs> he said, so I can spend some time. And so what he does is he sits down, he goes to the school a couple of days a week, and he sits down with five, six, seven-year-old kids and reads with them, but also helps them pronounce some of the words, helps them work those out um, so that they actually are learning to read I on love their own. this guy. Right? At 100 years old, still contributing, yeah. not giving up, going, I don't know when I'm going to be going. Yeah. You and, know? You know? And, so, and helping all these kids. Yeah, we don't have to sit around. I mean, retirement, I think most of us look forward to retirement. But at some point, you're like, okay, got a lot of time on my hands. What am I going to do? You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. His radio. You think this morning is cold, although compared to some weeks that we've had, it's not really as cold as it has been. No, a little teeny tiny cold snap. You know, that's a little bad. bit of rain that's throughout the day, too. So here's the thing. It was so cold in the Northeast that in Maine, and you may may have seen this, that frozen shark that they had on the shore. Like what? And it was similar to a great white. They say it looks like a great white. It's not. It's a poor be- beagle. Poor beagle. Poor th- beagle. I've I never think heard that's of- how you say it. Never heard of that. Yeah. It's, I guess it's very rare in so. these parts, but it looks like a great white. It could be 12 feet and 500 pounds. The big old boy. But this guy is up on the shore. He was already passed away. So the shark had some kind of injury. So it looked like before it was frozen, it was already yeah, dead. It looked like yeah. a harpoon, honestly. It didn't look like, because it didn't look like the injury was over the top of the shark. It just looked like it was on one side. So it looked like it was a human infliction. But they were honestly. saying, man, the, the time they took the picture, it was like 10 degrees outside, right. which shows you how cold it was if a shark that huge mm-hmm. was frozen like that and washed up on shore. Yeah, but they found him and I mean literally like a shark sickle. I mean seriously just a fro- shark sickle. I mean he was pretty much frozen solid. He was, yeah. So I didn't know, I guess I realize it gets that cold. I've never been to the northeast, so um I've never experienced it for myself. Really? You've I mean been to New York City. That's as far north as I've ever been. And okay. I mean New York City, Manhattan, never any farther than that. So Jersey? In that lateral? Is that lateral? It could be. It could be I something old. <laughs> okay, let me let me rephrase. Okay. I've never been to New England before. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning on his radio. Jasmine had her gotcha day just last week. Mm-hmm. And her school showed up to celebrate with her at the courtroom. Yeah, well, so her mom talked to the the teacher and said, is there anything special? Like, kind of, you know, this is happening. She's going to have to be out of school for that day. Is there anything we can do? And uh, the teacher was like, okay, let me think on it for just a bit. So she decided the class was going to count down to Gotcha Day. And so they had a big calendar that she already puts up that has the students' birthdays on it and that kind of thing. But it also counted down to Jasmine Day. They had uh, t-shirts that were made up um, that had what it takes a village or yeah I love my village is what it said. Um, Each of the students got it and then they went on a field trip. To the courtroom Yes. when she was adopted on her gotcha day. Jasmine Day. I I, love it. Yeah, I love that. Not only were the students involved, of course, the family, the teacher, but the judge, the bailiff. Like, everybody that was in the courtroom got together in this picture. And I think they all had T-shirts that say, I love my village. Isn't that wonderful? I love it. That is just so wonderful. I'm glad that this school did this for this one young lady who feels so loved right now. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. On his radio. I don't know why all of a sudden I'm hearing a lot about these things, so I think I need to get one. It's Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. Would you be referring to AirTags? AirTags, I yeah. thought so, yeah. Are they like 30 bucks a piece or something? Like I think they're like, you can get four of them for 100 bucks okay. or six of them for 100 bucks. I mean... And put them on everything. On everything. (laughs) There's this one family that's actually done that in North Carolina. They put them on their luggage, their phones, their keys. They even put them in their cars. Well, yeah, you want to keep up with it. Yeah, they do own a Toyota Camry, Mm. and they woke up the other morning and looked on their ring camera, and the thing was gone. Oh, no. Someone jacked their car (sighs) and took it. And so they realized it. <laughs> what did they do? Hey, I got air tags in them. We're going to track this car down. Wow. Sure enough, they tracked the car down. They called the police. The police went and got it. They had their car back within two hours. Two hours? That's how long that whole thing took. Hold on. I got to get online. Right? They get you <laughs> an air tag? Uh, several of them. If if I can deter it like that. Of course, they didn't know. The, the, the thieves did not know that it had an air tag. There was tag an air tag? No, of course not. 
Wow. You got to put that thing so where they don't see it. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I have a feeling some people will see air tags. Like my son has it on his keys mm -hmm. and he has it on his wallet. The wallet, you know it. Sure. And I'm thinking, well, if somebody jacks the wallet, they just take the air tag out and keep going. Yeah. Yeah. But, but to keep the car, to be able to find the car and that kind of thing, your laptop bag, you know, that kind of thing. All that stuff, okay. yeah. $30 sounds a little more worth it. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. On his radio. This happened to a couple in Canada. Yeah. They literally went on a business trip at the end of January. They come home and their house is sold. What, I, what my takeaway at the beginning of this is... Wow, the housing market is is crazy right now. Right? If they can only they were only gone for let's say seven days and they come home, house sold out from under them. How does it even happen? You Somebody know? took their identity, yeah, went right to the real estate agent, said, Hey, this is our house, we want to sell it, and they sold it immediately, got all the cash and ran. I mean, that was a lot of things. They had to close. Look, we need the closing in three days. Can you imagine all of the the details that had to happen to make the getaway? and get the cash, I mean, that normally goes with buying a house. It usually right? takes at least, at the very least, I've heard, weeks and weeks. Most likely it's months, right, before you can get a closing date. So all this stuff has gone wrong. Yeah. So you got a new family that's in the house, literally in the house. This other couple's like, they have no place to live. Oh, no. All their furniture is, like, gone. gone, and their clothes are all gone. They come home, and they're, like, homeless. What in the Isn't that world? Nuts. I, like I hope that they're able to at least find some of their things, and I'm not talking about you know like the decorations, but the photo albums and all those little trinkets, the the lock of hair from the baby. I hope they can find all those things. That is just wild. I hope they do too. You oh. know, and find these people and stop them because if they do it to this couple. They'll wind up doing it somewhere else, too. Yeah, they tell, know how to do it. Tell your neighbors you're leaving next time. Yeah. Say, hey, no, we're not selling our house. No. We're just gone for a few days. You're listening to Rob and Liz in the morning. On his radio. A couple of big things. So Toy Story is coming back. Um, Toy Story is going to have a fifth movie. I will admit I have not seen Toy Story 4. So I don't know where they're going to pick up in the storyline. Uh, but the biggest news out of it is that Tim Allen is coming back as Buzz Lightyear. So he's going to be the voice. Yes. Good. Yeah, because the last movie, it was like a standalone Buzz Lightyear movie. And Chris Evans, who plays Captain America, was the voice of the really? younger Buzz Lightyear. He sounds I, nothing like Tim Allen. You know, it wasn't bad. I did see the movie. Did not care for it all. It was a snooze. I thought you said you didn't see the last Toy Story. I didn't see the last Toy Story, but this is a standalone Buzz Lightyear movie. Oh, it was just called Buzz Lightyear or yes. something. Okay. Um, it was just a snooze fest. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what she really feels about I'm it. sorry. You know I am very passionate about my opinions, aren't I? Um, but yeah, so I didn't care for um, that movie at all. But I think, I think Tim Allen not being a part of it, if they'd have tried to cast... Chris Evans in this latest Toy Story wouldn't. Have. Please no, no, no. Tim Gotta Allen have is the, Buzz Lightyear. He is. His yeah. voice is it. I will say. I don't know if you watched Last Man Standing, which was the last sitcom that he was in. My husband watches it every but, day. Oh, I love it. It's great. So the the thing is, in the episodes like this last year or the last the last year of the episode, the final season, okay, final couple of seasons, you could tell his voice was getting aged. A little gravelly. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it was getting aged. So it will be interesting to see how he brings the youthful zeal back into it. He's going to probably has to rest some to really get that Buzz Lightyear voice in there. I'm sorry. I'm just seeing Toy Story 5 like... In the retirement village, <laughs> and they're all—they all have their own condos or cottages next to each other. That's what I'm seeing. <laughs> Story five. And he's at the assisted living facility with Buzz Lightyear, his old toy, and they have a reunite. They reunite. I'm so sorry. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go.